Okay, listen. I know my face is really red. I just filmed this video already and had to scrub it all off because my camera settings were all fucked up. I know my nails are broken. They're getting fixed tomorrow. But I wanted to film this video so it would be up for Tuesday. I don't want to hear anything in the comments about my fallen soldiers. They did their best and I did my best, but it didn't work. So we're refilming this video. It's gonna be kind of a first impressions, but not really because now I've used it all because I just filmed this video. <laughs> Today I'm gonna be talking about some new products. Some of them are new to me. Some of them are new in general. Let's jump into it. First thing I wanted to try out was the Fenty Beauty Primer. I didn't end up picking this up when Fenty Beauty launched because uh, I don't use or like primers generally, so I didn't see any reason to get it. But I just got sent it in PR, so I thought, why not? Mmm. This feels nice. Like, it doesn't really feel like it's super silicone or anything like that, which is kind of nice. It feels more akin to a moisturizer. Okay, fair enough. Here's a question for all you skincare slash sunscreen experts. I'm hearing conflicting arguments about this online. Here's my question. When I put an SPF underneath my makeup, does it offer me the sun protection or no? Because I'm hearing some people online saying that like if you put your SPF on and then put foundation over top that it's like no longer protecting you from the sun. I just want to know the truth. Please tell me. For my foundation, I'm going to be using the Too Faced Peach Perfect Comfort Matte Foundation infused with peach and sweet fig cream. Hmm. Okay. I would normally have never tried this because it has the word matte in it, which I don't agree with ever. But a friend of mine recently started working for Too Faced and she was like, it's not really that matte. So I was like, I'll be the fucking judge of that. I did try it already. This isn't a first impressions at all. I don't really like doing first impressions of foundation because I feel like the I mean, there's so many foundations that look great when you first put them on, but it really comes down to does it wear well? Does it look good at the end of the day? Because like, I'm gonna need this to work for me at my eight hour office job. Not me, I'm pretending to be you. So I have tried this foundation before. Um, I do like it. I don't think it's matte at all. I do agree with that for sure. The only thing is I typically sheer it out with like 50% moisturizer, just because I, I want a little bit more of a sheer coverage personally. So that's what I'm doing here today. I just cut it 50-50 with my moisturizer and then I'm gonna take my beauty blender and stipple it all over my red face. When I'm applying foundation with my beauty blender, I really like to continue to stipple all over my face until there's literally like no product left at all before I go in and dot more foundation on, just because I find that it keeps me from over applying. Sometimes I find that it's really easy to pick up way too much foundation on my beauty blender and then it ends up looking really, really cakey even though a beauty blender is supposed to give you more of that kind of like flawless finish. So that's what I like to do. I like to keep stippling it all over the face until there's like no pigmentation left on the beauty blender and then I'll go and dot back in and grab more product. So that's what that foundation looks like. It's pretty good coverage. The match looks, it looks okay. Mm -hmm. You tell me. Next, I'm gonna be using the Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer. This says that it has super coverage. Here's the thing. I don't disagree with that. It has incredible coverage, but I feel like sometimes when people market things as being really, really high coverage, it kind of scares people off a little bit. Like me, I felt like I wasn't going to like this because I don't like really, really, really high coverage concealer, especially when I'm wearing a more uh, sheer foundation just because I find that it can be a little bit too much. But this concealer is honestly stunning. Like it just became a favorite right away for me because I felt like it blended out so beautifully into the skin. It definitely does offer a ton of coverage, but it's not anything that looks really cakey or really thick even. But I mean, for having sheared this foundation out 50-50 with moisturizer, I feel like something as high coverage as that still blended pretty well into the rest of my foundation. If you tried Shape Tape and didn't like it, I would definitely consider picking this guy up just because because I feel like it's kind of what I suspect a lot of people would have wanted Shape Tape to be. And don't get me wrong, like I really liked Shape Tape when it first came out, but I just felt like as time went on, it became almost like too thick and too full coverage to wear with different um, kind of 
intensities of foundation. Like I couldn't wear it with a more sheer foundation because it just seemed too crazy and like bright. So anyways, I've been absolutely loving that concealer. I feel like it wears really well. It covers really well. Next I'm gonna be using the Glossier Wouter. I didn't order this in my uh, Glossier review video because uh, I don't fucking like powders. <laughs> but as I disclosed recently, I've been sweatier than normal, yeah. <clears throat> Sometimes bad things happen to good people. I don't know what to say. So uh, I did I did grab this when I was in California at the Glossier showroom. It is, it's a powder, all right. I don't feel like there's anything about this powder that makes it unlike any other powder. I definitely have been liking my Hourglass Veil a lot more than this one. I find that the more that I use that veil powder, the more I'm like, oh, this is actually the best powder on the planet. This Glossier one, like, it's fine. It, it does what it needs to do, but it's not anything where I'm like, wow, der. Okay, brief spoiler. This is the Maybelline Lemonade Craze palette. I was so excited to use this because I just think that the idea of this palette is brilliant and gorgeous. It's like a neutral palette with kind of more approachable pops of color and I just thought it was so beautiful. My only initial complaint with this guy is that I wish that there was actually more uh, yellows or even like some oranges mixed in there. I just felt like having only the one yellow kind of sucked because it was, it's, it's a lemonade palette. And there is some kind of like goldy tones, but it's majority actually pink. So maybe pink lemonade palette, I don't know. Here's, the truth. This palette is uh, trash garbage. It's so bad in every way. It's worse than all of my ex-boyfriends in a room with me with depleting oxygen levels. So having used it and determining what the issues that I had the first time were. I'm going to try it again, and I'm going to try and combat these issues preemptively, starting right now. So first and foremost, the palette was very, very gently pigmented. I used just my regular uh, kind of like skin tone primer potion the first time. I'm gonna be using the white primer potion this time to try and see if it can help at all. I'm gonna mix it, actually. I'm gonna put a little bit of the skin tone one close to my brow because I don't need it to be super light up there. And then I'm gonna take the primer potion in white across my lid, where we're gonna be putting the majority of our color. Nothing can go wrong here. Okay, I'm gonna start with the yellow color. Its name is Lemonade Craze. I'm gonna pick that up on my Smith 230 brush and I'm going to blend that into the crease. Oh, that white eye primer did, um, Nothing. This color to me would be one of the colors that would convince me to buy it. Like just looking at it, I mean, like I feel like I would see this palette on a shelf and be like, ooh, that yellow though, let me put this in my shopping cart and bring it up to the cashier and pay with money and leave and go home. And I feel like I would be pretty disappointed in myself having made that decision. If I got it home and this was the amount of pigmentation I was experiencing. It's just, um, how would I describe it? Bad, it's bad. It looks like a really rich kind of like warm yellow in the pan and on the lid, it's a very sheer wash of color and it looks almost more of like a highlighter yellow kind of color. It's more like sickly looking, I feel. These shadows are also really, really soft to the touch, which is nice feeling at first, but um, when you dip your brush, they do have a lot of kickbacks similar to um, like subculture. I'm gonna be picking up this color right here. It's called Coral Punch. And I am just grabbing that on the same kind of brush and I'm bringing that Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, it's kind of just all becoming this muddy, patchy, unblended shit pile. This is a perfect example of like, you know when people are like, oh, real artists can make anything work. No. Next, I'm gonna be taking this color Ice Pop. It's like a bright raspberry kind of pinky red. I'm gonna be grabbing that on my Hakuhodo J242, and I'm just going to kind of pat that 
on to about like two thirds of my lid. This color actually ended up being better than I thought it would in terms of pigmentation. And I also feel like same thing with this one that I had issues with with the yellow. It looks a lot more rich and deep in the pan. And on the lid, it just looks like kind of a more sheared out version of it. This color is a little bit buildable, definitely more so than the other ones, but I don't feel like you can completely build it up to be, you know, the color that it looks in the pan. I also find that at some point it stops laying properly and it kind of starts to like pick up on itself so you're actually making it less pigmented by trying to continually pick up more. I'm going to be picking up that color Coral Punch on the same brush and I'm going to pat it over the inner corner of my eye. I didn't want to take that red tone too far into my inner corner just because I don't want it to look like an eye infection. I'm going to take a little bit of that color Ice Pop and see if I can blend it into the crease at all to make this a better gradient. No? Okay. I... I haven't used eyeshadows this bad in a in a long time. I also don't feel like I've had such a negative review on my channel in a long time. I'm so sorry, Maybelline. I'm gonna take this color Citrus. It's kind of like a gold with like a pink shift to it. And I'm gonna see if I can make something happen here. I'm gonna put that over top of... Oh, for God's sakes. Okay, I'm gonna wet my brush with a little bit of Fix Plus. And I'm going to pick up that shadow again and see if I can get a little bit more pigmentation out of it when it's wet. Oh, what the hell? Do you guys see what's happening here? Like it just all balled up into these chunks and like rolled off my eye. What the fuck? Look at it. Look at these big chunks. Like it literally is almost like, what the fuck? It's almost like when you put a silicone primer down and put the wrong type of foundation over top and it like pills and like rolls up. Have you guys ever gotten that? That's what this is doing right now. This is so fucking bizarre. Okay, so second attempt with this palette, it actually somehow got worse. I'm gonna try and take that same color citrus on my finger and see if I can... Wow, dude. Just in the efforts of like trying to make this even match somewhat. Oh my God, this is so bad. It just makes you wonder like, what did that board meeting look like at Maybelline where there was like a group of people sitting around and everyone tried this palette and people were like, yeah, let's move forward with this. If this is your first video of mine, I, I really, really recommend that you check out some other ones. I, 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 can do makeup, like I'm, I'm okay at it. I don't want this, I don't want what happened here today to give you the wrong impression of who I am as a person. I just, mm, mm, okay. Moving right along. I'm gonna pick up this color Main Squeeze. This was probably the only, literally the only shade out of this palette that I liked the last time that I used it. I just put a little bit of it on my inner corner and I felt like, the uh, pigmentation of it was okay, and I also felt like the texture of it was kind of interesting. It was a little bit more of like a chunky glitter in a way, but I feel like the texture of it was really kind of pretty on my inner corner. I'm just so disappointed in this palette. I really loved the concept of it. I thought it was gonna be really cool. I thought it was kind of a unique palette and it looked really different from anything else that's kind of like on the market for drugstore. Because I feel like a lot of drugstore palettes are almost always like neutrals and then when they do come out with a colorful palette, it's like, what the fuck happened there? But this to me was something that like, I, like I could see Anastasia coming out with a similar colored palette to this. You know what I mean? Like it was unique, it was different, it was still super wearable. Like I just thought it was a really, I just thought the concept of it was so great. Execution, real bad, real, real bad. I'm just trying to kind of finish this off and make it look somewhat cohesive and somewhat wearable. Um, but truly I'm horrified. <laughs> I haven't really tried out any of the neutral colors from this palette, but I doubt that people would be buying it for exclusively the neutral colors anyways. I'm just gonna quickly pop on my lashes and then we'll move on to the rest of the face. This was a tragedy that took place here today. I don't know what else to call it. All right, well, I really wanted to have a romantic love affair with that palette, but then Maybelline was like, you're engaged and just kind of intervened. My back is very sweaty from the stress of trying to apply that. I'm gonna move on with my life. 
Hopefully Maybelline can do the same. Okay, I'm gonna be using the Becca Sunrise Waves Bronzer. I've been seeing a lot of people, a lot of my friends, raving about this on the internet. I actually ordered this on Sephora before I saw people talking about it uh, because it was in the best sellers section and I was like, I wanna be part of the best seller section. It has kind of like two strips of shimmer on either side and then the actual bronzer itself is really quite, um, pearlescent as well. I thought this bronzer was gonna be right up my alley. Um, I don't, I don't dislike it. Like I've continued using it for sure. Um, but I, I, w I wouldn't write home about it. It's not something that I would sit down and be like, you guys need this in a video. Like I, I do like it. I think it looks really pretty and glowy um, and the color is nice. Like I don't feel like it's too warm or too cool or anything weird like that. I don't know, that brush I was applying it with was kind of weird, but. The thing that I do like about it is I feel like it builds really naturally. I feel like it kind of reminds me of the butter bronzer and that it's really hard to over apply, which for me is a good thing because I can tend to be a little heavy handed when it comes to like blush and bronzer and stuff like that because I just want to be glowy, you know? I want to be like sun-kissed and pretty. Next I'm going to be using the Hourglass Ambient Strobe Lighting Blush in Brilliant Nude. It looks like this. So they had their original blushes, which were kind of a marble effect as well. And then these ones are marbled with the strobe powder. I love the original formula of these. I think that they're so fucking beautiful. I haven't tried the strobe one yet. I mean, I did earlier in my video. Spoiler, I think it's pretty. I do definitely feel like this is less of a blush on me and more of like a kind of highlight or even like a transition for my bronzer. It does give me like a nice glow. If you were deeper than me, even by like a shade or two, I wouldn't say that this would show up as a blush at all on you. It would be like a really beautiful like highlight or finishing powder, but definitely not um, like a true blush on deeper skin tones. On those of you with fair skin, you might get a little bit more of those kind of blush tones in it. It definitely kind of looks more like a glowy finishing powder rather than a blush. Like you can see it kind of has that gold tone to it. It really doesn't have any kind of like blush tone at all. I've been loving applying my blush with a fan brush. Oh my God. I like to kind of just load it up on the very tip of my brush and then I will sweep it on really gently and then turn my brush sideways and just kind of sweep it back and forth to really get like a nice blend and fade going. Okay, for my highlight, you know, I couldn't stick with all powders. It just ain't me, dog. This is the Lila B Glisten and Glow Skin Illuminator. I had a couple of you guys ask me on Twitter whether or not I liked this and I didn't recommend it to you guys because it's very expensive. It's over $70 in Canada, if I recall correctly. Uh, and I just I wasn't that taken by it. The packaging is absolutely beautiful. It's the same kind of Lila B packaging. that looks like a pebble. It's really like shockingly heavy. It's beautiful. And then it twists to open like this to reveal the product. This definitely has a more, uh, cream to powder type finish. It doesn't stay tacky or glowy on the skin. Uh, it really, really kind of dries down to look quite powdery and a little bit more textured on the skin than a traditional cream highlight would, which is one of the reasons I don't enjoy it as much. I just find that it looks a little bit more dry. It emphasizes texture a little bit more. And I also found that the first time that I used it, it like evaporated off my skin. I'm gonna start applying it while I chit chat with you guys about it. I'm gonna be using the small end of my beauty blender. So yeah, the first time I used it, I didn't mind how it looked upon application and I still don't, like I do think it's really a nice look. And I think on oily skin especially, you'd probably be um, you know, more attracted to a formula like this that is a little bit drier and is a little bit more of a kind of powdered finish. But I just felt like it came off so quickly on my skin and it was just brutal because it's so expensive that I feel like you shouldn't really have any issues with a product like that. Oh, there's just so much much fallout here, but I'm just gonna cover it with this highlight. I did try this product again today, obviously, because I filmed this video earlier and I felt like the highlight wore a little bit better on my skin, um, but I still just don't feel like I would recommend it to you guys. It's, it's pretty and it's like a nice thing to kind of have on your vanity because it's such beautiful packaging and it does look pretty upon application, but I just, I just have a, like a hard time swallowing that pill. It just feels so expensive when I'm not wowed by the formula. For my lips, I'm gonna be applying the MAC and the Leah collab. Uh, this is in the shade Try Again, which I did on this video. I actually don't mind that color. I mean, I don't think it's like the most flattering color in the world on me, but I actually don't mind it as much as I thought I would. When I first took that lipstick out of the packaging, I was like, oh, mm, that's gonna look fucked up. <laughs> but I actually think it looks mm, not bad, not good on me, but not bad. And then this color is Lily's Motor City. This is the gloss, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of that over top. It's like a coral. 
and it mixes to be this super weird color. Same MAC formula as always, same gloss formula, same lipstick formula. I like their formula for lips. I always feel like it's kind of like a standby. Is it a good color on me? Not really, no, but it's what we're going for today. All right, you guys, so that is everything for me today. Thank you so much for hanging out and chatting. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something cool today. Let me know what you'd like to see next in the comments below and I will get back to you. All right, guys, peace out.